President Trump doing well in his fight against COVID. Libs and commies hardest hit. Dems pushing again to postpone ACB's vote. Calls to re-prosecute the Breonna Taylor case. And New York City has zip code based lockdowns. Welcome, friends, to the Buck Sexton Show. Quite a weekend. The journos, the live media, showing us exactly who they are and what they're all about. I couldn't even keep up with the conspiracy theories. I try to at least give myself some time on, say, Saturday. I I try to give myself a a little bit of leeway before I have to dive back into the, the political madness. But it was impossible to avoid this weekend, really. Because you would see a conspiracy theory and think they can't really believe that, do they? And then you would have so-called experts going on air. And if you were thinking, and I don't think anybody was, but if somebody happened to be thinking that maybe this would be a moment where the president of the United States has what could be a life-threatening disease. So far, it seems like he's going to be just fine, as I've been telling you so far. Uh, But when you would think that that would bring the country together, it turns out that, no, for the libs... They can't even give the guy 48 hours in the hospital to see how he's doing before the endless conspiracies. And and look, just let's be clear about this. They're rooting for a negative outcome here. I won't say how negative because some of them maybe draw the line from the worst possible outcomes. But they, they really do think that it's bad for their cause unless the president gets really sick and is in the hospital for a week or two where it's clear that he's been really hit hard by coronavirus. Because, look, this is all very political. They're going to pretend like it's not. But whenever someone these days says to you, COVID-19 is not about politics, they're about to tell you something that is absolutely partisan. They're about to tell you something that is clearly political in nature. The president is doing well so far. And that means that you have a man who's 74 years old who is in a a body mass index range that could be considered also an additional aggravating factor for COVID-19. He's on remdesivir. He's taking dexamethasone. So they put him on some of the better treatment, some of the better modalities for approaching recovery in this virus. But he seems to be doing pretty darn well. And the libs are going back and forth. I can't tell what the conspiracy is going to be because it changes every few hours. I was seeing some, how do we know he's really sick over the weekend? And I'm not talking about random internet trolls. I mean people who are professional commentators, people in the media, journalists, saying that they they don't think that we can really trust the president of the United States even has COVID-19. Maybe this is some kind of scam. Now, if you were looking for a a clear, you could call it a rapid results test for Trump derangement syndrome, I think you have it with people who believe that the president could theoretically be faking his COVID-19 diagnosis. This is insane. This is people who, who truly need help. They may not have COVID, but they have a sickness of the mind. And the president has broken them. They're no longer able or capable of thinking clearly and normally about things. Uh, Then the other side of this uh, is that the president is getting what what the president uh, put at risk. Secret Service agents, because he went out and was in a car where there were a couple of Secret Service agents driving. And it was a, a short duration, but he was waving. And the journos were apoplectic about this. Completely freaking out, very angry because they're saying he put those uh, those agents lives at risk. And I even saw one anonymously sourced, of course, Secret Service agent who was saying that, you know, they're willing to take a bullet for the president, but not from the president was the line that was making the rounds over the weekend. First of all, uh, the president's health is not the health of just a normal person in that it affects our national security. It affects the economy. The markets will move up or down based upon this. This is really important. This is big stuff right now. Every life is precious and we're all equal in the eyes of God. But the president of the United States 
gets a personal security detail that's really a small army because his health and his safety matters to the country in a way that your average citizen does not. And hey, I'm here to admit that that's not really fair, but that's just the reality that we live in. And the president showing people that he's doing okay also has a value beyond just our, an, an average run-of-the-mill person saying, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a little bit better. He was wearing a mask. The Secret Service agents were wearing a mask. I don't know if there's a partition that separates them in the car. If there's a partition, I feel like, what are we even really talking about? Uh, but if there is no partition, even still, I was led to believe that masks were very effective, we're told, very effective at slowing the spread of this virus. So there were precautions taken in the vehicle. Uh, but there's also the possibility the Secret Service agents have already had COVID or been exposed to it. And then there's also the fact that they're around him all the time. They have to be in proximity to the president in rooms where he has just been present, in areas where he has been breathing the air. That's just the nature of the job. If the president had the flu, for example, there would still be Secret Service protection and there would be some degree of risk. This is really getting to the fundamental question here. This is what people don't think about and need to think about. There is no such thing as a risk-free existence. And there is no such thing as a government that can protect you from all of the risks, health and otherwise, from daily life. And if they try to do that, you are living in a tyranny. We need to start accepting that there is no perfect safety or perfect future here and live with the virus around us instead of in constant fear of it. But there's so much now. They're, they're desperate to show uh, that the president of the United States, because of his recklessness, that's, it's his fault he got sick. These are the things they want you to believe. It's his fault that he got sick. It's his fault that people around him got sick or that anybody was exposed to the virus. Blaming Trump for a virus that has spread around the entire globe. And in countries that are similar to us in terms of population density, uh, health precautions, the outcomes have been very similar to our outcomes. In fact, the U.S. on a per capita basis has done a lot better than many of our European counterparts. Other heads of state, other first ladies have gotten COVID-19. So is it all Trump's fault? I, I just want to know what's really our baseline here. You know what you're not hearing about a lot these days in the media? Spain, the U.K., Ireland, all going back into lockdowns. In the case of Ireland, a full-scale national lockdown. The U.K., back into lockdown. Spain, back into lockdown. France, Paris is locked down. They're going to lock down even more beyond that, too. But wait a second. I, I, thought, I thought that they had done such a good job. And I thought all we had to do was wear masks, and it was the big, bad, mean Trumpster who wasn't wearing the masks enough, and so that's why it spread here. But why is it spreading all over Europe again? There's really no U.S. travel to Europe, so what's the problem here, folks? Is it Trump's fault? Is it the fault based on what the journos say about Trump? Is it the Europeans' fault as individuals that they didn't wear masks enough? Is that why they're getting sick? Is that what we're led to believe? Just notice that this creates this, this veneer of an explanation, this facade of an explanation for why ever this disease will spread anywhere. It's, it's the fault of the people for not listening to the government enough. That's what they're going to tell you. A government that has been atrociously wrong in, in all cases all over the world about how to deal with this. The World Health Organization, the CDC, the experts have been catastrophically wrong. Do not forget that. Same people that will now point to the CDC when they like the guidance or when they think it's useful as a political weapon. They don't care about public health. This has really come down to two people who are at two kinds of people who are advocating for the extreme lockdowns. Those who are just terrified, petrified. They they don't care what the actual death numbers show as a percentage of the population, they don't, it doesn't matter. They're terrified and they just want everyone to live in fear as well because they can't help themselves. They're just so scared. And then there are people that view this at every opportunity as a means of both controlling other people and defeating political ideologies or a political ideology in the U.S., in this case, conservatism, that is rooted in individual liberty in the freedom of the, of the individual to act and uh, lawfulness, rule of law, all of these things. This is all under assault now. It is lawless, in fact, to extend states of emergency indefinitely 
I don't care if a legislator hands that power to the governor. I mean, that's like the legislator handing the power of a legislative body to the governor, which is what they've done in New York. That's not supposed to happen, right? The Supreme Court doesn't get to say, hey, we're going to give all of our power to the president. We're done here. Too scary. Don't, don't want to make any big decisions. Right? That, that's an erosion. That's a destruction of the separation of powers, which we have in place for a reason. These different governors are not acting as though we've learned the lessons we have in recent months. You look at Cuomo, you look at Murphy in New Jersey, Governor Whitmer up in Michigan. Florida is pretty much open in terms of open for business. Yeah, I'm sure people take some precautions still, but Florida's doing pretty well. You know where else they're doing well? Just to bring this back to Europe for a second. You got about, depending on the day, as many as 10,000. This is just the last couple of weeks, 10,000 new cases in Spain where they're not really doing a lot of testing, mind you. But they have a lot of sick people, a lot of people that are getting sick and going to the hospital in Spain. Uh, You know where you have about two to three hundred cases a day? Sweden. Whatever happened to Sweden is experimenting with mass human sacrifice. Remember that stuff back in May and June? Why is it that Sweden, which is even colder, so you'd think there'd be more indoors and more shared air circulation than you do in, say, Spain. Why does Sweden only have a few hundred cases a day? And Spain, France, the UK, thousands and thousands of cases. Now, I know there's larger population, but control for population size. Sweden has 10 million people. Spain's got about 45 million people. So 4X, okay, 200 cases times 4, 800 cases. Is that 10,000? No. So why does Spain have so many more? They keep acting like shutting down society and telling us all to stay in our homes is some brilliant scientific method to control this. Like, this is some epidemiological breakthrough. No, you're shutting down society, and once society starts getting going again, there will be some more spread of this disease. We knew this in the beginning. It was flattened the curve for 15 days. If it was really about stopping the disease in its tracks until a vaccine was in full distribution everywhere, how could we have ever thought it was going to be 15 days? And that was Fauci and all the experts. How could we have ever thought that that was really a plan? 15 days was just meant to get the hospitals up to speed so they could handle it. And then we were supposed to transition back to normal life as closely as we could. And remember, while we had 15 days and then 30 days and then 60 days, huge spikes in cases in New York, New Jersey, continued more and more transmission, more and more transmission going on. It had already been seeded all throughout the population. And what lesson did they learn? No lesson. Listen to us more, peasant. It's your fault that this is coming back. That's what they tell you. That's what the experts say. It's all because we don't mask enough. There was a time when Fauci, just a few months ago, was saying social distancing is really the key. But then they realized social distancing is a fancy word for not living life and being around people. Treating everyone, healthy and sick, like we should all be in quarantine. Social distancing is effectively mass mass quarantine. That's what they're telling everybody. That was the idea. And we think that this is... Uh, a path forward and it's not even remember it was locked down until the vaccine is too damaging to society we can't advocate for that that's what the experts were saying now it's well we don't know how effective the vaccine will really be and there'll be a percentage of people that you know that that it doesn't work for and we have to distribute it so now we're going to we're going right now that the timetable the democrats are on is they want biden to win and then 12 months from now Maybe they'll start thinking about actually stopping the panic. Maybe once they've had a full year to institute more policies, to propagandize more, to use the state of emergency to, you know, transition into we need a climate emergency declaration now, all that stuff. Then maybe. So you're signing up for at least another year of this insanity if the Democrats have charged the federal government. And at the state level, unfortunately, New York, California, New Jersey, we are screwed. Our governors have learned nothing. They're morons. They've learned nothing. Oh, actually, they like this. They like the power, certainly, of all of this. And the lib elites don't miss a paycheck, don't mind working from home. A lot of them have multiple houses to go to. They're fine. They they don't see this as being a big deal. And when they really need to break the regulations and stuff to go to a fancy party, they're just going to be careful about that, meaning careful not with COVID, but that they don't get caught. That's what you're going to see. That's what's already been happening. But then Trump comes along, and this causes a problem for the liberals. It causes a problem for the Democrats. 
So you have a 74-year-old man of some girth. Not that I'm judging because it's been tough, tough lockdown for all of us, but 74-year-old man of some girth who may be able to basically beat this thing in a few days. Okay, we're all living in fear of this virus. We're crushing our own economy, destroying millions of businesses and at each other's uh, at each other's throats in public over whether we're wearing a piece of cloth that doesn't actually seal anything around our mouth. But, you know, maybe it lessens the transmission a little bit. So we all have to do this now. Right. That's what this is not based. There's no data to show you on this. They just say do this. Okay. But if the president beats covid and then beats Biden. I don't know if the left can even handle this. How could they be more broken than they are? Aren't they already emotionally and psychologically shattered? I really hope that this is what happens, and I think it will. But I also wonder what the country will be like when the libs realize for all of their machinations, all their schemes, plotting and dishonesty, they still lost. What does the COVID-19 pandemic have to do with you losing your home? Well, it's pretty straightforward, you see. The FBI is telling people that cybercrime's up in general about 75%, and home title theft is a cybercrime. The bad guys find your home title information online, they kick you off using a quit claim deed, put themselves on, and then take out loans against your home's equity. You often won't find out about this until you receive the payment notices or perhaps even a foreclosure notice in the mail. The usual identity theft services do not protect you against this. You have to protect your home's title with Home Title Lock. Just go to HomeTitleLock.com. Use the promo code RADIO for 30 free days of protection. You can also check at the site to see if you're a victim of this crime and don't even know it yet. Create a virtual barrier around your home's title with Home Title Lock. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. Use the promo code RADIO for 30 free days of protection. Do it today. Take action. Protect your home and its value. That I think the president is is sicker than the doctors are letting on. And again, I I, I, I hate to say it that way, but they, they have made that clear all throughout this these last several days. They keep telegraphing things that are highly concerning but then painting this rosy picture. Uh, the president is on three different medications. Mm -hmm. His oxygen levels have dropped. We know that there are findings on his imaging studies uh, that are not normal. So th these are all things that would certainly le lead one to believe that he is uh, sicker than you know doing fine, maybe going to go home tomorrow. The going home tomorrow sort of comment, that really struck me as it did you, Fred. This is a doctor. Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN, who is diagnosing a patient uh, without seeing him and knowing anything about him, diagnosing by reading news headlines, right? I think he's sicker than the doctors are saying. Really? What the heck do you know? But this is what you have to do. You go on CNN, reckless speculation about the health of the commander in chief. No big deal over at CNN. I saw a hilarious graphic making the rounds that as the president continues to improve from COVID-19, CNN's flag is at half, half staff outside its Atlanta headquarters. That's, of course, a flag of the Chinese Communist Party outside. It's great. It's great. Uh, that was a fun one. Yeah, CNN is, is, a, is a disgrace, and it's atrocious. But he, here you see, instead of just coming together here for the country, I mean, they're, they're rooting against the president and spreading lies about what's really going on with him. And you have to ask the question, I mean, about that Chinese Communist Party flag joke. Uh, or you know the People's Republic of China, the, the the CNN folks, the journos. If we were invaded by China tomorrow, you have to ask, who do you think that they'd be rooting for? I don't know. I, I start to wonder. With Trump as president, it's a close call. Normally, I'd say they'd root for America, but with Trump as president, I don't know. Oh, now there's also that story that they're they're hopping all over the place about uh, very, very upset about Trump's doctor, Dr. Conley. And uh, he said this and oh, oh, they're looking for something. Remember, w what are they really poking at here that the president people are lying about? We're going to know if he's healthy or not. OK, we're going to figure this out really quickly. There's go there's going to be a a clear determination here one way or the other. Either the president gets better 
or he gets worse and we got a real problem as a country. But the libs, are, they can't wait for any. They're, they're looking for anything they can to dig into right now to undermine the positive vibes around the president and the sense that he's getting past this. Whatever they can do. They've dug into this process. They've dug into every statement of every person from the White House and from the doctors just looking to find even the slightest inconsistency without applying the basic rules of, of English and human decency where you would say, look, you know, we're going to say the, pre- you know, we, the president's doing well. What do you mean doing well? We had somebody else say the president had some concerning symptoms. Is that? Well, yeah, you were talking about doctors here. They're, they're, they're not going to sit there and, and go into panic mode. But the Democrats want panic. They want it. And they also want to find ways to make this whole scenario about the recklessness of Trump and his team. And speaking of Democrats, here's Chris Wallace. Did the DNC a big favor in that last debate? I'm sure there's a big fat contract waiting for him at NBC whenever he decides to leave Fox. Whenever whenever he pulls the Shepard Smith, which, you know, why shouldn't he at this point? We all know what the deal is. But Steve Cortez, a friend of mine, and uh, he was getting into a little bit of a tussle with Chris Wallace on air. Play three. People were distanced and they had been tested. Both of those things were true in that no, convention Steve, hall. No, Steve, they weren't distanced. And there were rules, and there was no there was they, no freedom of choice. I, they broke the Chris, rules. I was there. I was break? there like you no, were, and they Steve, were distanced. Wh- why those did they break the rules? Those chairs were not close together. Look, those chairs were not close together. And again, we also believe that people. It doesn't can make matter, Steve. The rules from the Cleveland Clinic they were close together, Steve. And the rules okay. from the Cleveland Clinic were everybody wears you know, a mask. Why didn't Chris, they? Chris, the way you're starting to harangue me now actually reminds me of what you did to the president during that debate on Tuesday night when oh, he had yeah. to debate I, he, not I just Joe. Him. No, and then he had to he had to debate not just Joe, Joe Biden, but you as well. You were not a neutral moderator then. I don't mind tough questions. I welcome you know how much- reasonably tough questions, but what I don't think is okay is for you to become the effective opposition to the president. Okay, and those everyone there was tested in the crowd. They were distanced from each other. People can make reasonable Steve, decisions that- for themselves. State, no, they actually they can't. No, they can't, he says. You notice that, Chris Wallace? People can't, you can't decide for yourself. You have, no, you have no more health autonomy. Oh, get ready for forced vaccination, my friends, because that's happening. And I, I'm about to get a vaccine because I got a little nephew coming in a few weeks. I'm about to get a vaccine for whooping cough, and I'm fine with that. I'm not anti-vax. Don't even think that for a second. But mandatory vaccination for a disease that really only affects a certain portion of the population. Remember, we're not talking about mandatory vaccine just for people who are at high risk. Everybody, everybody's got to get it. That's what we're going to be told. Hmm. Uh, okay. I'm not, not, now, that hasn't been determined yet, but if you think the Democrats aren't willing to do that, and remember, there's a lot of ways to coerce without saying it's mandatory, but making it effectively mandatory. Oh, you don't have to get the vaccine. You just, you can't go to a public school in New York, let's say, without it. Oh, Too bad. But wait, my eight year old, you know, is at very little risk from this and uh, the parents will get vaccinated. But why does he have to get vaccinated at this stage? No, they're not going to care. You're not allowed to make health decisions for yourself. Not allowed to make health decisions. That's that's another part of this. We also can't even talk honestly about why is the U.S. at such high risk? Why why have we had uh, some of the problems that we've had? Well, we have a lot more health issues in general than other countries do. We do have we have, for example, one tenth. And that's a real number. I mean, I, I've actually done the uh, pull the numbers on this, pull the data. One tenth the obesity of of Japan, similar numbers in South Korea, 10 percent. Now, that's the single biggest risk factor other than age for this disease. But we're not even looking at that. In fact, what we've done is made everyone less healthy, made people gain weight. And I mean that seriously, people have gained some substantial weight during this period. Not helpful. Not helpful for the uh, inflammatory system, uh, inflammatory systems that kick in if you, if you do get this disease. But instead, what we have is all, all, all of the above policy, right? One size fits all. That's top down from the federal government, especially if Biden wins. And I think that was so illuminating when you had Chris Wallace saying, no, they can't actually make decisions for themselves. That's really what the Democrats think here. You, can, you can't make this call. Sorry. Not allowed to make this call for yourself. Mm-mm. can't do it other people have to be making these calls for you you know i just saw today a, another study another study i don't know if it's you know which studies are we supposed to believe another you know peer-reviewed study says uh covid can spread 15 feet in the air 
Mm, okay. So so now when you say, well, if it can spread 15 feet, why are we distancing six feet? Because distancing 15 feet is going to look truly ridiculous. And it means that a lot of things are completely impossible. Forget about indoor dining and restaurants and all this. But it also raises the point, well, so what are we really going to do here? We're going to live in a society where we stay, you know, 20 feet away from each other. Why not 30 feet? You know, if, if you're really worried about this, shouldn't it just be 30? Well, then just just don't be in the same indoors environment with any other human being for as long as we have this. I suppose that's the direction we're going into now. I mean, the libs have really convinced themselves. I see it now more than ever that if only we complied more. And this is hitting the Midwest hard right now, right? A lot of cases in the Midwest. Texas has been through this. Arizona has been through this. Florida has been through this. Georgia has been through this. You know, it's been through the South. Now, when in the early days of this, I remember I was doing this show from New York. The pandemic was, you know, people thought it might have had a up to a 3% fatality rate, which would have, you know, we're talking about Spanish influenza numbers you're getting there. I think Spanish influenza was 5% fatality overall, but that's, it spread like wildfire and that was millions and millions of people dying from it. Turned out the real individual case fatality rate was something, it's something more like 0.01%, 0.02% of, of people who get it, something like that. And, and that's for all age groups and all, all, health, uh, all health profiles. I remember in the early days, people were saying, oh, but, but it's not going to be that bad elsewhere. No, it spreads all over the place, and it's highly contagious. And we know this now. We've seen this. Uh, we also know that there have been periods where, as I've said to you, in New York, and I, they want you to forget about this, you di- I did not see an unmasked person in Manhattan indoors for months. Months. And people were wearing masks and gloves and the cases kept it kept going up and up and up and up and up for about 10 weeks. The same thing you see if you if you look at the way this goes, it gets into a population. You've got about a 10 week, a 10 week. It looks like a bell curve. And then it finally goes down. And if you look at mask mandates and when they're instituted and what ends up happening afterwards, there's no correlation between government mask mandates and cases going down that you can, I mean, it happens in some places and other places. It's the opposite. So why can't we have an honest conversation about this? Oh, no, because and it spreads 15 feet. But don't worry, the cloth mask you have that doesn't actually filter out anything that's in the air uh, that would be aerosolized. But don't worry, the cloth mask is going to entirely protect you or even substantially protect you. I mean, maybe is it 5 percent better? Is it 10 percent better? I I brought this up over the weekend and, and I see people, you know, we're having the same fights. And I know it's frustrating, but think of it like gun control. Every two years the libs go into some frenzy about gun violence and they forget all the all the arguments we've had in the past all the reasons why mass confiscation will not work mass confiscation is not possible and they want the same fight over again because they just want to wear us down this is a little bit different because they actually have the the quote consensus on their side and they're hoping that we forget everything that's happened in the past Right. But I remember when New York was in full on lockdown and it was cases and more cases and more cases. And well, hold on a second. We were being so careful. We were being so careful, but it didn't matter. We're, we're told to forget that now or that, that that didn't really happen. And also this now moral judgment. It is now a moral judgment if you don't wear a mask. And this is what you see with Trump and the White House staff and the way the media is depicting all of this. It's reckless what he's done with the Secret Service. It's reckless. You're putting people in harm's way by not wearing a mask constantly, even outside, even outside. Now we've gone to outside mask wearing. Oh, yeah. A few months ago, we were told, no, no, no. Come on. That's not necessary by the same health authorities that now say, oh, no, it's necessary because what they keep mandating that we do does not work. So what do they do next? Mandate the next thing and say we didn't do the thing they mandated well enough. Lockdowns, friends, are like communism. It's never that the system is rotten. The system is ineffective. It's that we didn't do it the right way. And apparently all of us have been murdering people with the flu for as long as we've been alive because we weren't wearing masks. People who believe in the sacred powers of cloth masks will dismiss this. They'll say, "Eh, it's not the flu. No, really think this one through. Forget about the idiots who can't think for uh, for themselves. If you're putting people at risk now, because you don't wear a mask outside. Well, what about all the all the years? You know, I've had the flu several times in the past. 
And people say, oh, but you're, you're the symptoms. Right. We have all this asymptomatic spread of COVID, which is interesting because do we have the same degree of asymptomatic spread of cold viruses in general? But a question for another time. But even with the flu, you are you are contagious, very contagious for 24 hours before you show flu symptoms. So we've been infecting people because we don't wear masks and social distance during flu season. Tens of thousands of people die every year. And the only they'll, they'll dismiss this. But the, the real answer is, well, 30 to 60,000 flu deaths every year isn't that bad. And Trump wasn't president. Those are the only answers that they act when they're actually forced to look at this issue and look at this question. Those are the only answers. There is no other answer. I'm sorry, as you can tell, I'm very frustrated by this. And and I'm frustrated that people aren't willing to be uh, honest about what has happened and what is happening. And we're all supposed to live in this fantasy land where if only Joe Biden was. Joe Biden is a moron. OK, if Joe Biden was in charge, this would all be better. It's not possible to be really intelligent and believe that. I'm not saying Trump has done some great job. I don't think anyone's done a really great job because ultimately I think the government isn't able to do that much about this. It's not that much. If, if I'm wrong, explain to me why most of the westernized industrial countries around the world have had pretty much the same outcome, which is really bad. But that's obvious, isn't it? Think it through. Think for yourselves. One of the reasons why I appreciate those of you listen to the show is that they, you listen to this because of the thinking we do here, the analysis we do. I don't have the biggest flat platform. I don't have a show on Fox News. I don't have a lot of people putting up billboards of me all over the place. We just think better than other shows. And you, my friends, are a part of that. In case you're wondering, because I keep saying things like they were really wrong, folks. Health authorities were wrong. Politicians that now currently act like they're heroes and all this were wrong. Here's a little trip down memory lane, courtesy of uh, Grabian. And it involves the New York City health director, the mayor of New York. A few other people on there from the Nancy Pelosi, other people on there from the early days who were telling people uh, not only should they be out going about their lives totally normally, go right to the uh, Chinese Lunar New Year festivals in Chinatown in San Francisco and in New York. That's where you want to be. That's the place you should be hanging out. Play two. The risk to New Yorkers for coronavirus is low. And our city preparedness is high. This should not stop you from going about your life, should not stop you from going to Chinatown and going out to eat. I'm going to do that today myself. Come to Chinatown. Here we are. We're, again, careful, safe, and come join us. There is no concern at this time for coronavirus in our region. The Department of Sanitation is ready for Mardi Gras 2020. The facts are reassuring. We want New Yorkers to go about their daily lives. But there's really no need to panic and to avoid activities that we always do as New Yorkers. We are hardy people. Americans do not need to panic. What I would suggest, however, mm -hmm. is that Americans take this as a wake-up call for seasonal flu. There's very little threat here. This disease, even if you were to get it, basically acts like a common cold or flu. Those are all people that are now telling you, sorry, guys, we might have to keep you locked down and in your apartments, you know, stay at home orders, shut down businesses, uh, non-essential businesses closed again until we say so. They won't even give you metrics anymore until they feel like you can reopen. de Blasio I, you can't make this up, folks. De Blasio is putting in zip code specific restrictions for New York City. Zip code specific. So, you know, you got to remember that in New York because of the, the population density here. This is the zip codes here are not big. A zip code can be, you know, 10 blocks of the city. You can walk from one zip code to another in a matter of minutes. So they're going to have for some if you're a shopkeeper in a in a high risk zip code out in Brooklyn or Queens right now, you will be told, sorry, uh, your business can't open. But if you're a five minute Uber ride away, you're allowed to keep doing your business. I mean, look, I'm glad they're not shutting down everything in a sense, but this just goes to show you how stupid and arbitrary this is. And when people like me point out, and I'm right, this is arbitrary and it is dumb beyond words. When people like me point this out, I get yelled at. Oh, it's because of you. Like, as if I'm to, I have to wear my mask. I can't even leave my building without wearing a mask. I can't go anywhere without a mask on. 
All right, people now in New York are, are psychotic about mask wearing, more so than ever before. And they say, oh, well, well you're the reason. I'm sorry, I'm the reason that this virus, not just me, but people like me, I'm the reason the virus is spreading because I point out that you're instituting policies that no person with above a single digit IQ could think is actually going to do anything here. Zip code specific restrictions. Okay, if you live, imagine if there was if there was a really bad flu season. Just take out the COVID for a second. Imagine being told, "Hey, your business that's uh, on 40th Street has to shut down, but on 55th Street, 10, you know, 15 blocks away, uh, which is less than a mile, you're allowed to have the same business opening." This is for your health. They're telling you this is for your health, and you say, "How could they do something so arbitrary and so insane?" People are going along with it. It's all Trump's fault. So all the anger is being transferred onto Trump. So Democrats benefit from that. They like that. Right. If you're if you feel frustration at this, it's, it's President Trump's fault. That's what all the Democrats are being told. Everything's on him. That's what they say. I mean, they're actually saying that in New York. The governor Cuomo says it when he's not busy sending covid positive seniors into nursing homes for a death sentence for thousands of people. De Blasio says it. They just blame the president. So they have the control they want. They put all the blame on the president. So it's a useful attack against him. And they just get to continue on. They increase their power, have no responsibility for the downside, put all the blame on the president and hurt his political support. Politically, this is a dream come true for the left, isn't it? 